Okay, guys, on the bench today, it's a Goodwill Rescue. Somebody got this out of a Goodwill, and they paid $60 for it. You can see that Goodwill always uses, a, like, a grease marker, and they mark their stuff. But we got to put this thing back together. It's a Lotus guitar. Uh, made in Korea, probably 1970s. She's in pretty rough shape. But we're going to try our best to get this thing uh, playable. And the string height is just, it's got such high string height on this thing. We'll see what we can do to get this thing to play good. And so here we go. Okay, so where to start? Well, let's plug it in. And let's see if she makes any noise. Okay. Well, it's making a little bit of noise, which is a good thing. Um, let's just go ahead and get in here and pull these strings off of here. And then we can take a look at this bridge. It's really setting up really high. There's a lot of, and, and the tuners, half the tuners, well, two, in, two of the tuners are broke, so I have to dig through and find some sort of tuners to put on this thing. So there is a lot of work to do to this guitar. I think though, I have a lot of used guitars laying around. So my goal is to get this thing playing and not sink a bunch of money into it. You definitely do not want to do that. Okay, there's our tailpiece right there. Doesn't have, it's a compensated stop tail bar. Does have the two uh, little adjusters coming out of each side. I don't know if they turn, but this this is to try to intonate the, the guitar by bringing it either forward or back this direction or this direction, right? Okay, so, yeah, um, two of these tuners are broken, and this is the, the, they're the kind of tuners that don't have the little screw holding the button on there. So I'm going to pull these six tuners off of here and we're just going to get rid of these things this is probably the best upgrade you could do to an old guitar like this is to replace the tuners because these these tuners are really 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 bad so let's get these things out of here Yeah, very cheap. Let's just say goodbye to these things. Now these holes will probably need to be, depending on what kind of tuners I can find to put on here, they might need to be drilled out a little bit bigger. But we have to dig through all my parts to see what I have. Made in Korea tag right there. Probably 1970s, I would say. Okay, so these need, I've got them all taken off, off the back. And, you know, I used to take a screwdriver and I'd shove it down in there and I'd hammer on it. But I found a nice way 
To take these out of here, you just take one of these and these uh, these orange Chicago tool things work really good. Just shove that down in there and then you work it back and forth like this. And after a second, they come right out. So you, it uh, prevents you from chipping the top of the guitar. And so there you go. And well, real quick and easy taking those out of the top there. Like I said, I used to take a hammer and like a straight screwdriver and I would tap them out. And what that did was sometimes it would chip all around in here. And this way it works a lot better. It's kind of tough on some of them, but there we go. Okay. Well, since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and take this truss rod cover off. There we go. Okay, so we also see that the nut is broken off right here on this side. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to knock this out of there. There we go. And we'll install a new nut. Let's, uh, let's test on this truss rod since we're already here. Let's see if we can loosen it. Oh, wow! It's been like 30 years since anybody's turned that. Easily 30 years, maybe, maybe closer to 40. Okay. So you know what, since I got this off of here, I'm gonna go ahead and shine this up. So I'm gonna take some uh, Meguiar's compound. We're just going to put some of that on here. And we'll go ahead and shine this up before we put some tuners on there. There we go. That looks good. Let's spray a little tiny bit of this on. So we've done lap 65. Okay, all right, so these are the tuners that I got my hands on, and these look to be ping tuners, and so uh, this should be an easy install. Let me flip the guitar over, and we can see that we're going to have to take my drill, and we're going to have to drill these out a little bit wider, but I can do that. Okay, so before we put these tuners on, I'm going to just go ahead and shine this up a little bit here. Got the old Made in Korea tag on there. I'm going to spray a little Dunlop. 65 on there. That was way too much. Okay, so the tuners that I found were some ping tuners. And they should sort of just fit right in here. Then I'm going to have to re-drill a couple of holes. But again, this is going to be 
major upgrade for this old guitar. And these tuners, uh, you know, I have like a box full of old tuners and so I didn't have to go out and buy these things. I got them in in a trade or I buy, you know, I buy a bunch of uh, like boxes of parts sometimes. I bought a storage locker a month or two ago and there was some random parts in there. So the trick is to save all your old parts in case you need them. And I'm just kind of snugging these down a little bit. And I'm kind of just eyeballing them to see if they look nice and straight. And uh, then I'm going to get back here. And we got to drill these little holes right here. Okay, let's just take a look and make sure they look sort of straight on there. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I got blue tape on here to so try to give me a clue on how deep to run these. Because you don't want to drill through the headstock all the way through. There we go. Okay, I got the tuners on. Let's take a look at the electronics under here. So we've got some potentiometers. This guy right here is all wound up and crazy like. So let's see if we can figure this thing out. Very inexpensive. Oh, well look at that. It was not hooked up. You know, I bet I could save this. Guys would be like, just throw a new potentiometer in there. I don't know if I'm going to. We're going to see for a minute. I will put one of these little washers underneath it to give it a little bite. So it stays in the wood better. This guitar is definitely made out of some type of plywood, which is obvious now that you've uh, got the back off of it and you can see what we're working with here. And all this white goop, this is just polishing compound when they buff this guitar out in the factory. Okay, so. Got it working. Didn't put any money into it. And so uh, that's always a good thing when you don't have to put any money into it. But I got those things going. So uh, 
I think now we're just going to clean it up a little bit and we got to tighten all these. And so just a few more things to do up on the top here. But I will go ahead and now that it's all soldered in and it's cooled off, I'll spray these electronics out. Okay. And so that should be good up here. I've got this all tightened down. Okay, let's, let's pull that Goodwill price sticker off of there. It hasn't been on very long. The date says 422 of 23, so it's only been on a few days. And uh, I took this guitar in on a trade. And the main reason, and it wasn't to make a ton of money, it was to do one of these kind of videos. I thought it would be fun to, uh, I always enjoy doing these guitar resurrection things, bring these things back from the dead kind of video. Yep, so I guess now we can just kind of clean on it a little bit. We also got to take a look at this fretboard. Little tiny frets on here. Let's do the old clean and Take a little bit of sandpaper to the fretboard, shine the frets up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go ahead, and this is black wood that, um, I don't know, it might have been stained or something um, from the factory, but we'll go ahead with our normal procedure of putting some Music Nomad on there. Music Nomad F1 oil. And we'll just kind of see if it cleans it up. We'll just let that soak in for a little while. Probably wouldn't hurt anything to do the whole entire body with this stuff. Okay. I can go ahead and put the back cavity cover back on. And this guitar has the little tiniest little screws that hold these back plates on. Guys, if you're this far into this video, thank you so much for watching.
sometimes these videos can get long. And I think that's exactly what's happening in this one. All right, let's shine on this guitar a little bit. We're going to use some Meguiar's Ultimate P Compound. And let's just see what happens here. This guitar, hopefully, uh, you know what happens is guys are like, oh, I had one of those when I was 14 years old. I had, that was my first guitar. And so sometimes as a good memory of, uh, you know, your childhood, guys will buy one of these guitars because it was their first guitar they ever had and it was a good memory. And they can hit, make a wah hanger out of it or something. But this one, I'm hoping that I can get it to be somewhat of a good playing guitar. Back of the neck looks nice. It's got a nice uh, sort of a sunburst kind of look to it. Too bad the body didn't look like this. On the back. Okay, let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. Yeah, it's got years and years of dirt on the back. Yep, years and years of dirt. Serial number L500RS. This guitar, again, it's all about video content. If you guys like watching somebody take an old guitar and shining it up, that's what this video is about. It's not like I'm going to make a ton of money on this guitar. Doing this to give you guys something to watch when you have a when you have plenty of time, right? Sit and watch television. I, I watch YouTube on my big screen at home. So I can't really add comments and things like that when I'm watching. I watch all the same channels you guys do. Okay, we're gonna hit the back one more time with some of this Dunlap. And just see if we can shine on this a little bit better. Luckily, a lot of guys don't care too much about what the back of the guitar looks like. Made in Korea before South Korea was like, hey, hold on. There's guitar specs that we should be trying to live up to. Uh, they finally figured it out. That's what I'm trying to say. In the 1970s, China 
South Korea. Some of these countries, their quality wasn't so good. You know, the Ibanez factory, the Greco factory, there were some good factories, but it took them a while to really catch up. And now, I think uh, some of the greatest guitars that are being manufactured right now are in some of those uh, Indonesia factories, Cortec of Indonesia. There are great guitars being manufactured out of the, some of those factories. But when this one was built, they, they didn't really have it together just yet. They were giving it an effort, but it was more of a money grab. You know, trying to make some money making a cheap guitar. So I have a, a bag of a bunch of these plastic nuts and we're going to try one that is an inch and five eighths and let's see how that thing fits in there i'm going to say straight off the bat this nut looks perfect here's the one that came out of the guitar and here's the one that i want to put in and so for me that's as close as we're going to be able to come on this, on this old girl. So, I just take some wood glue and a toothpick. And we're going to get in here. I shove the toothpick down in the wood glue. I just smear some on right there. Then I smear some on right there. I've said it a bunch of times, don't use super glue. Because if you ever have to change this, you'll never get that super glue out of there. Then you just set that down in place. Okay. And with your finger and your thumb, you can kind of center it and you can feel where it feels like it's in there nice and tight. You can get rid of some of the excess that spews out, but there shouldn't be too much excess there. But again, thumb and finger, and you can, you can move it back and forth and you can kind of feel when you have it centered on there nicely. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to let that set up for an hour or two. So it's time to go to lunch or something. Take care of some customers that come in and I will get back to this guitar later on today or maybe tomorrow. All right, these things are laying around in here today. And so a very old pack of Gibson vintage reissues, the world's finest strings manufactured Gibson Guitar Corp uh, Fleetwood Elgin Illinois okay let's see hopefully there's enough of them here <clears throat> old strings laying around might as well use them on something like this they don't look rusty so far so good, wrap around tailpiece, put all the strings through here first. Yeah, once in a while I buy a guitar from somebody <coughs> and there'll be a pack of strings in the guitar case. And uh, that's exactly where I got these strings. Just old strings that were laying around. I get a lot of used straps too. I actually sell used straps for 10 bucks a piece. I have a whole box of them. Because again, you buy a used guitar and there's a strap in the in the in the case with the guitar, and I don't want to just throw them away. Once in a while, I'll give one away, but yeah, I, I try to sell them for 10 bucks a piece for uh, old used guitar straps. 
And there's a lot of guys that are thankful to get something for 10 bucks. Okay, this one looks like the B string is a 13 gauge. I don't know if Gibson still manufactures strings. For some reason, I'm gonna say they probably don't. Leave me some comments, guys, on what you think about uh, Gibson. Whoa! About Gibson still manufacturing strings. I have a feeling they probably don't do that anymore. Okay. So we're gonna set this in here. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this top one. guys might not be able to hear it, but I have a customer in the store playing his guitar right now. And he was just playing a song by the Cars, which kind of blows my mind. I've never heard that one before. All right, so it's got high string action on this guitar. There's not much room on the bridge to adjust it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a neck shim in this. So I'm just going to lay the guitar down on the face of the guitar like this. I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna pull this uh, neck out of here and I'm gonna shim this thing. It's got nice big neck bolts on here. I'm going to leave the strings right where they were at. And now let's take a look inside here. And yeah, it's uh, okay. That's okay. So, yeah, there's no shim in there. You can see it's a very inexpensive plywood body. But I have this new stuff, like uh, this plastic material that would work really good as a neck shim. And so I'm just going to, it's a 3M plastic. I'm going to make a neck shim out of this stuff. So let's take a look here. I'm going to cut it about right. I cut it like right about, I'm eyeballing this, but I think I'm going to make it a pretty nice size. I'll see you later. All right, Jamie. Have a good day. Have a good day, ma'am. You too. All right, yeah, so it's a neck shim. <clears throat> and it has, again, uh, it's, it's, it's made by 3, 3M, which is what is that? Minnesota uh, Mining and... Mechanical, what's 3M stand for again? You Minnesota mining, I don't know, but it is so. But it's got adhesive on one side, but I'm not going to use the adhesive, we're just going to set this thing back together and maybe it'll bring the string height down better. Bri, edit out that part where it all fell apart like that, okay? All right, so let's just tighten these down.
Okay, stretching out the strings a little bit. Just to make sure they're seated in the stop bar real nicely. Or the tailpiece, I guess you would call that. The tuners on this guitar feel really good. Positive, <clears throat> positive upgrade. Let's see what's going on with this thing. How's it play? Probably could have put a larger neck shim in it because the string height is kind of still high. But it's a playable guitar. Now when you go to do a, a little string bend, you can hear that it's all scratchy and stuff. But that's not because the frets are all scratchy. The frets are very small and tiny. That's actually the string rubbing against the fret board. Yeah, so if somebody wanted to uh, really work on smoothing out all the fretboard, because it's kind of rough. The wood is just kind of rough. The nut turned out good on it for just a plastic replacement nut. That's the only real part that, that's the only uh, part on this that I had to... Uh, you know, I had to buy the nut. I have a whole pack of them, and they were like, I don't know, they're like two bucks a piece when you buy a whole giant pack of them. The tuners, they turned out good. Um, they're still, I left the holes. You know, you could take like little pieces of toothpicks or something and some, and some wood glue and fill those up, and then hit them with a little bit of those that furniture... Uh, markers, you know, those different furniture colors. It's got a nice little chip right there that I probably could have hit with like a black furniture marker. And, uh, but overall, overall, it, it's okay. It turned out good. I'm happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. And uh, there you guys got it, an old guitar that has been brought back to life. You can find old guitars at Goodwill, and that's exactly where this one came from. Somebody had donated it. Thank you guys for watching, and everybody have a great day. Mm -hmm.